Hello and welcome to the Football Today podcast. I'm Josh Schneider-Weiler. Back when we started this show in early October, one of the first episodes we did was about the mass migration of Japanese players to Europe. And to begin the research for that episode, I began by looking at the national team on Wikipedia, clicking on link after link after link, reading as much as I possibly could. And like many of you listening, I didn't have the faintest idea who was actually making these web pages. Who was the one compiling all the data? Who was adding the photos and the hyperlinks? But now I do know. It was likely Gabrielle Anello. This episode is part two of a two-part series we're doing on the people who make Football Wikipedia what it is. Part one featured Johnny Sharples on how he uses Wikipedia as a tool for humor. And today, Gabrielle Anello tells us why he spent years editing Japanese football pages. I'm Gabriel Anello. I'm from Rome and right now I live in Munich. I'm working for the Zoom and uh, I've always been uh, uh, really in love with, uh, with football and especially in the last decade, I believe, with uh, Asian and Japanese football. So I guess that's a, a good link to start. <laughs> What do you like so much about Japanese and Asian football? Many reasons, probably. Uh, of course, in Italy, uh, growing up, you have this great, great influence by Japanese cultural world because you have anime, you have... I've grown up playing at the PlayStation. So, yeah, Sony was a big part of my life. And um, a dear part of my family, my cousin, who was uh, older than me, because she grew me up, basically, so she went to Japan, and right now she's there. She studied Japanese, and she moved to Tokyo in 2011. So right now she's in Sendai. So, And um, it's strange how uh, Japanese football, professionally speaking, uh, was born uh, in 1993. So it's a young movement. And um, I feel like, uh, I may be uh, using the, the wrong term, but I think it's correct in the end. I feel like a pioneer because you're witnessing something that is still growing. It's like uh, a young man going to, you, through university. So you don't, you're not following the, like an old league. If you take the top five in Europe, probably the, I think the youngest one is Bundesliga. And Bundesliga has been around for 50, 55 years, 56 years. So J-League instead is 25, 26 years old. And uh, you're witnessing history. You're witnessing something that maybe in 20, 30 years will be ancient times. <laughs> and you'll be around to say, oh, I was there. I, I remember that thing, that game, uh, that championship. So that's also one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about Japanese football. So at what point do you start using Wikipedia? Well, the point started probably 2013, 2012, because before 2010, the World Cup in South Africa, I didn't have too many chances of following Japanese football, even with the results, because it wasn't so easy. After that, I started focusing on Japanese football by following video on YouTube, the J League channel was pretty updated, so you couldn't complain about, oh, I can't find this video because th th there were a lot of highlights, so there was any problem. And so I started editing, I think, in 2012, 2013, because I was following the Japanese national team, which, by the way, at that time was coached by uh, an Italian head coach, Alberto Zaccheroni, who won also the Asian Cup in 2012 and uh, 11. So Basically, I started just updating the cups, the games, and the goals uh, by the players uh, who were called up for that particular match. So I was only on one page. But then I thought, and because I was also writing about Japanese football, and often I found myself trying to search for information through Wikipedia, especially with the maybe Japanese pages. And so I thought to myself, but why isn't this data, these stats, 
also updated in English. It's strange to me. And so I started to think maybe I could do that. And so I started updating some pages, but it didn't happen so often until 2014 when I started instead, I opened an account. So I had my account on Wikipedia and I started updating a lot of things because I thought this is going to be useful because I'll, I'll get more information along the way by editing pages. And at the same time, I'll leave something behind that's, that's right. So that's why I started doing that. What was it like when you started doing it? It was strange because you felt uh, you felt some responsibility because y you don't want to add something mm, that is not correct or incomplete. So I started searching for um, certain info and that was useful because uh, I found myself finding also other sources to uh, search for certain informations. And uh, it was also strange because I knew Wikipedia had their own rules, but sometimes I had some problems figuring them out. And uh, because sometimes my pages were reverted to the previous status, so my updates were canceled. And at the same time, I, I didn't understand why. Then I started looking at the, you know, the rules for using Wikipedia. And it was, uh, it was a learning process. Uh, so it was strange because you were develop developing a certain ability which didn't seem useful, but at the same time, you found yourself uh, growing with certain things you want to know. And at the same time, you, you learn something new because uh, you learn how to be, not, not only how to use a tool like Wikipedia, but maybe also you start being uh, more methodic, more, more careful. Uh, so that was interesting uh, about myself because I found myself discovering something new about me, which I didn't, I didn't know back then. You discovered that you were, you know, more methodical and you were more careful and more measured, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it was about being um, more careful about, I don't know, um, you, you had to fix that data, that stat. You, you realize yourself that maybe on the Japanese page, uh, it was all correct, but it lacked or something. So you, you were able to find the right sources to update that information, maybe add something about a player's career, something that maybe was written in Japanese but was, was missing in English. And so that also helped me finding new sources to find more information, even for the articles that I wanted to write. So it was interesting to have that kind of discovery. You said that you had to kind of figure out the rules of using Wikipedia and that, you know, they would cancel some of your updates. Can you give me an example of maybe like one of the rules or things you had to learn along the way? Well, one of the rules is that, of course, to use uh, Wikipedia, you had to add sources, which I, of course, knew back then. But I didn't know which kind of sources you could use or not. So sometimes I found myself, you know, uh, trying to update certain status, certain data about caps and goals of a certain player. And uh, maybe I was thinking about transfer marks, something like this. But then I found myself discovering that my updates were reverted back to the previous status. And so I discovered that, no, you can use transfer marks, despite it's one of the biggest sites about football anyway. And another fact was, for example, the, I discovered that I could have used a picture that I took during my trip in Japan because I was there in 2016 and I went there to see a game in Tokyo. And I found myself using the pictures that my girlfriend took back then at the Ajinomoto Stadium in Tokyo. So right now, if you go to Wikipedia on certain pages of, I think, certain FC Tokyo and Kawasaki Frontale players, there are pictures that I took during the game. And that's curious because uh, when I opened the page about certain players, because some of them are still relevant for the national team and for the league in general, I find myself seeing a piece of my trip anyway. So uh, in a certain kind of way, it was even romantic because you open a page about a certain player and you find yourself 
seeing uh, a picture of your trip. So uh, th- that was another part of the, I don't, I don't want to say a job, but of this hobby, basically. That sounds like such a special story. So you get that kind of nostalgia or that really good feeling almost every time you go on, you know, a Japanese Wikipedia entry. Yeah, indeed, because I was lucky enough to go there during a, an important time because back then I remember I picked the game because it was a pretty big big clash because uh, FC Tokyo were uh, were on the rise and at the same time Kawasaki Frontale had one of the most entertaining teams back then so it was pretty amazing to be there and uh, I remember also that uh, one of the players that featured in that game Yoshito Kubo is actually right now the all-time top scorer for J League and uh, he broke the record uh, the in the week before we went to see that game so I, I have this uh, El Golasso which basically is a three times a week magazine in Japan about football and you can buy it in the in the combini so in the the stores there and I have it with this great uh, uh, image about Okubo breaking this record and the whole game was amazing and when I went to wiki to edit something I always remember that a part of me is there so probably the the most entertaining uh, experience about Wikipedia is the fact that it's an hobby of course uh, there are more official sources but at the same time you leave there a part of you because uh, part you build a part of knowledge but at the same time you leave there a part of the knowledge you apprehended so you you got during time so it's pretty amazing is that why you do it in the end, I think so. You asked me when I started doing this and why. Right now, of course, due to work, it's 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 harder to update pages and being uh, you know being there. But at the same time, I think uh, some of the knowledge I got from Wikipedia by consulting Japanese uh, pages about certain players, certain clubs, leaks. Uh, it helped me expanding my my views about Japanese football in a way that probably I couldn't have been able to to do with other tools. So I owe a big time to to Wikipedia because uh, of course uh, it's uh, it's an hobby, but at the same time uh, I got the the great chance of basically improving my knowledge, improving myself, uh, and um, you know getting to to know Japanese football even more. So. You told me that you started editing pages back in January of 2016 for about 90 minutes a day. Talk me through one of those sessions. You sit down at your computer and you think, (laughs) okay, I'm going to go and do, I'm going to do what? Like, what's the process? The process behind that is particular because there's a reason why I started in January. Because Japanese football season isn't like in Europe. You don't see them playing uh, from, I don't know, August or September to May or June. It's different because it's played from February to December. So basically around that time, you know that some transfers have been made. You know that some players have switched clubs. And so that was a good chance to update the Wikipedia page about the transfers in Japanese football, which actually is a list And it's a long one because right now in Japanese football you have 55 professional clubs. So you have the the page about the winter transfer market in Japanese football is then composed by three different wiki pages because one is for J1 League, one is for J2 League, which is the second division, and one is for J3 League, which is the third tier. So basically I sat at my desk and I said, okay, now you have these clubs to update just take a source and trying to search for links from the clubs that actually confirm that kind of transfer about that certain player and then link it to the wikipedia page so it's verified there won't be any issue or problem and uh, i did those kind of sessions for many winters actually 
probably this is the first winter that I had some problems sitting at my desk and do that for 90 minutes, but I have done it for the last four winters. And uh, it was fun because in a way you get to know what's going on in Japanese football because you can't keep track of all the, the transfers. There are people doing this also outside of Wikipedia. But you can get a, some updates once the transfer window is basically over. So you can do one leaks page. You can update that for good. Fur tire, I think three hours in total to update all the 15 clubs and you're good to go. Then you go to J2 and you can do that probably in five hours because there are 22 clubs. So it, it takes more time. But at the same time, you're good to go once you have done everything. So Basically, those sessions were full of information, but it's also a good way to get those information because otherwise, in Japanese, you would have some problems to track all the transfers. Instead, if you do something like that, you can keep track of all the transfers that actually happened. And at the same time, you can take note of everything that's going on during that winter. So that was pretty helpful in, the, in a cer certain way. So it helped you kind of summarize everything that had happened that month in the transfer market. Yeah, absolutely. Because since I have also a blog about Japanese football, if I want to write a certain article, maybe about the best 10 moves in J1 League. And so I need to understand the full spectrum of all the moves that happened during that winter. Doing that kind of work on Wikipedia helps me understanding which kind of moves are better to talk about with the readers of the blog. And so that's a pretty helpful tool. Actually, it's a helpful proceeding to understand uh, which kind of moves could be more interesting uh, to highlight in a certain article. So you started in January of 2016 and you said you would do these like 90 minute sessions. How often would you update these pages? Are we talking about like one 90 minute session a week or once every two weeks or, you know, how often? It depended on the period because the first time that I started in January 2016, I was just finishing my master's degree in communication. So I had to find a job and... Uh, I had some free time. So basically what happened there was that I was having the, I think, three or four times a week, 90 minute session because putting everything in order, that might be, sound strange, but putting everything in order uh, also helps me being, uh, I don't know, more at ease, more quiet with myself. It relaxes me. So it was a, an hobby, but it was also like a relaxing hobby. It was relaxing for me. So in 2016, for example, I was doing that for, uh, I think, three or four times a week, these kind of sessions, for uh, five or six weeks at least. But I got most of the pages updated because I had a lot of free time. Of course, last year I was already here in Munich, so I didn't have that much time. And uh, maybe I did that once a week because with work and everything and the move to Germany, I didn't have so much time to do that. So you've done it less and less kind of over the years, but you still do it on a you know weekly or consistent basis. Yes, I don't think this will ever be something that will leave me at a certain point. I think uh, at this point, uh, updating Wikipedia pages has become something of me, basically. Uh, it's become a part of me. So I think this will never in a certain way end. But that's nice because you know that you can be useful you help updating an info that might serve also a purpose for someone else. So that's good. And at the same time, you also know that you'll get more information about something you are interested in. So probably I will never end doing that. But at the same time, of course, life intervenes. You have more commitments. You have certain hurdles. You have less time to do things. So yeah, that kind of hobby is slightly decreased probably during time, but I don't think it'll ever leave me in the end. I'm sure you've mentioned, you know, this hobby of yours to your friends or your family. What do they think of it? My family saw me doing this and they said basically nothing. 
because yeah maybe they don't understand what's the point but at the same time when i explained to them that this helped me gather more information about japanese football they said okay i can understand that no problem my friends i don't think that many of them knows about this they know that i'm passionate about japanese football of course they know that i don't think they <laughs> they can ever imagine that i'm so passionate to the stretch that i would update wikipedia pages i don't think they know that but probably they would say to me oh it's usual gabriele the, why are you pushing yourself into this but that's why it's nice because passion for a certain topic, a certain purpose in life, doesn't need by force an explanation to justify it. For example, despite being born, you know, have, having lived my whole life, almost my whole life in Rome, I support USC Sandoria, which is a team from Genoa, uh, despite that I don't have at all any tie to the city. Many people ask me why you support Sandoria. You could give the same answer you could give about the question why you update Japanese football pages on Wikipedia. It's about passion. There's not there's the reason by force uh, a rational explanation. I think so. It's about what you feel in your heart rather than what you feel in your mind. What does it feel like to know that thousands, if not maybe millions of people will read what you're writing on Wikipedia? It gives you a certain certain weight, a certain kind of responsibility, I believe, because, of course, Wikipedia has its own rules, so you can break them. There, There's no, uh, even if you want to do that on purpose, that wouldn't happen because it's impossible to leave there. It's, I don't want to say impossible, but it's really hard to leave there an information that is not correct because it will get updated, fixed, changed. At the same time, though, it's really nice to know that some people, even like me, who are maybe into Japanese football, but not as much as I do, could maybe could try to search for certain information. And uh, unlike myself, that I wasn't able to find anything, maybe they will be able to find something because of the work that I've done. So in a way, that's, uh, I don't want to say a civil responsibility because we're talking about football anyway, but it's nice to know that you can impact someone else's lives and passions, despite the fact you might be miles and miles apart. So that's really interesting. Have you like ever spoken to someone who's referenced your work on Wikipedia or someone said, oh, I found this great stat on so-and-so player on Wikipedia and you know that you put that stat on the page or something like that? The beauty of this thing is that you find in Japanese pages something that maybe has not been told in English language at all. So uh, you find infos that are really interesting. So maybe I've not talked directly to someone about certain infos that, that I found, but I put them into articles. I tried to write as much as I could about Japanese football. And in a way, I feel like I tried to uh, bring the knowledge that I found through Wikipedia on outside of the platform through the articles. It's incredible how Wikipedia, which was something so small, uh, and maybe not so relevant 50 years ago anyway, has grown into something like this. It helped, or at least it marked people's lives so much that the first thing you have to think about when you hear a certain fact or a certain profile, oh, I got a Wikipedia that. So that's crazy, really. Gabriel Anello writes about Japanese football for his blog, J League Regista, and regularly contributes to Wikipedia. This episode was produced by John McKenzie and Hugo Chambre. I'm Josh Nutterweiler, and thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed the show, please rate and review us on iTunes and share it with a friend.